Cetyryl alcohol pops up in ingredient lists all the time. This is because it is an incredibly useful, super versatile ingredient that you should definitely have in your formulating pantry, and today we are going to learn all about it. Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are doing a deep dive into cetyryl alcohol. In this video, we will be covering what cetyryl alcohol is, why we use it in our formulations, how to use it, substitution suggestions, and then we will wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using cetyryl alcohol. As always, please think of these ingredient deep dives as the partner video for the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia entry on the same ingredient. So if you are looking for a quick written reference, make sure you check that out over at humblebeeandme.com. All right. Let's dive in. What is cetyryl alcohol? Cetyryl alcohol is a blend of cetyl alcohol and sterile alcohol. Cetyl and sterile alcohols are both saturated fatty alcohols. You can purchase them independently, so I find that cetyl alcohol is quite a lot easier to find than sterile alcohol. Cetyryl alcohol is available in a variety of different blends of cetyl and sterile alcohol, so it's really important to know what blend you've got. Your supplier should provide you with this information. The cetyryl alcohol that I use in my formulations is 3070, so it's 30% cetyl alcohol and 70% steryl alcohol. In addition to the 3070 blend that I have, I've also found 50, 50, 60, 40, and 70, 30 blends. If the cetyryl alcohol you have is a different blend than the cetyryl alcohol that was used in the development of a formulation, you may get noticeably different results in your finished formulation. For example, according to ingredients to die for, 3070 is a more potent and effective thickener than 70, 30 is, so you might need to use more cetyryl alcohol if you have 70, 30, but the formulation you're following was developed using 30, 70. Cetyryl alcohol functions as an emollient, a thickener, and a hard hardener in our formulations. It is oil soluble and considered natural. It could technically be made from non-vegan sources, but I've never found a version of cetyryl alcohol for sale to home crafters that was not sourced from a plant material. Cetyryl alcohol is yet another white pellety ingredient, so make sure you are paying close attention to your labels as you're formulating. Cetyryl alcohol is a component in a lot of emulsifying waxes, like emulsifying wax NF and BTMS 25, so it often ends up in formulations even if you haven't added it independently. Despite having alcohol in its name. Cetyryl alcohol is not drying or irritating to the skin. In chemistry, alcohol just means an organic compound in which a hydroxyl group is bound to a carbon atom. The alcohols that people are often worried about in skincare products are volatile alcohols like ethanol, which is alcohol we drink, and isopropyl alcohol, which is also known as rubbing alcohol. Cetyryl alcohol and its components, cetyl and sterile alcohols, are not volatile alcohols. They are fatty alcohols. So both the fatty alcohols and the volatile alcohols meet that chemistry definition of alcohol, but they do perform very differently in our formulations. Cetyryl alcohol will not dry out your skin. This wonderful ingredient is inexpensive, incredibly versatile, and has a very long shelf life. I highly, highly, highly recommend having some in your formulating pantry. You will use it all the time. Why do we use cetyryl alcohol in our formulations? Cetyryl alcohol thickens or hardens our formulations and adds body. It also boosts emollients, adds richness, and stabilizes emulsions. It is incredibly versatile and widely compatible with all kinds of ingredients and formulations. If you would like to learn more about the chemistry of how cetyryl alcohol thickens our emulsions so beautifully and effectively, Amanda over at Realize Beauty has written two really interesting in-depth blog posts about this. I highly recommend checking them out. I will link to them in the description box below this video. Cetyryl alcohol can help raise the melting points of our formulations, meaning it can be a good tool in the battle against unwanted melting of body butters. If you'd like to learn more about why your body butter is melting and what you can do to stop it, I made an entire video on this last year, so make sure you check that out. Now, of course, there are a lot of ingredients out there that will thicken and harden a formulation. So why choose cetyryl alcohol over something like cetyl alcohol or candle lilac? One of the reasons I'll choose cetyryl alcohol for a formulation is because it thickens our formulations and boosts richness in a very pleasant way. There's no tackiness like you could get from a true wax, and it generally doesn't make formulations feel greasy or really heavy, but it does boost that richness just a bit. If you are familiar with cetyl alcohol and stearic acid, I tend to think of cetyryl alcohol as being kind of in between. Cetyryl alcohol is richer than cetyl alcohol, but it's more slippy than stearic acid. I recently shared deep dive videos into both cetyl alcohol and stearic acid as well, so I highly recommend watching those to get to know all three of these awesome fatty thickeners. How do you work with cetyryl alcohol? First things first, it's a solid, so you are going to have to melt it to get it to do anything, so throw it into your heated oil phase. It melts around 50 degrees Celsius or 122 degrees Fahrenheit. I tend to use it at one to 7% in emulsions, so this really does depend on the blend of cetyryl alcohol and how thick 
shape you want your formulation to be and everything else that's going on in the formulation. Just try it and see, but remember that a little cetyryl alcohol can go a long way in an emulsion. You'll often use more than that 1 to 7% in anhydrous formulations, but again, it depends. You know, what else is going on in the formulation? Are there other hardeners? Are there a lot of solid butters? Like what else is going on? In any event, I doubt you'd use more than 40% cetyryl alcohol, but you could try it and see. To show you how cetyryl alcohol works to thicken liquid oils, I've prepared five different mixtures with safflower oil. 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, and 40%. And each mixture was melted in a water bath and then stirred as it cooled. Please remember that I am using 30-70 cetyryl alcohol for these experiments. If your cetyryl alcohol is a different blend, I highly recommend doing this experiment at home so that you can see for yourself how your cetyryl alcohol works. The 5% blend is a liquid, but it has a definite richness boost and is wonderfully slippy. The 10% mixture is a very decadent, soft solid with a gorgeous, rich consistency that forms soft peaks. It's a bit ointmenty, but without the greasiness that often comes with ointments, and could possibly be a good whipped body butter consistency depending on the ambient temperature. The 20% mixture is definitely a solid, like firm mashed potatoes. It's got good slip and richness. And honestly, from here on out, the mixtures are just getting harder and richer. The 30% blend is getting quite a lot harder and more butter-like. It's feeling noticeably richer than the 10 and 20% blends, but it still has really quite good slip on the skin. And lastly, the 40% mixture is hard. I can't break through it by just pressing on it with my finger. Solid chunks of this mixture can be broken apart by squishing them, but it definitely takes some effort. On the skin, the mixture is rich, spreadable, and buildable, and still has quite good slip, even at a whopping 40%. If you'd like to see results of even more ratio, I did a written version of this experiment on my blog, so I'll link to that in the description box below. I also did this exact experiment for subtle alcohol and stearic acid in those deep dive videos, so make sure you check those out so you can really see how these three fatty thickeners differ from one another. What can you use instead of cetyryl alcohol? A good place to start is a blend of cetyl alcohol and stearic acid, though how much you'll need of each really depends on which blend of cetyryl alcohol you are looking to replace. If your cetyryl alcohol is 3070, like mine is, I'd start with about 60% cetyl alcohol and 40% stearic acid. So if a formulation called for 10% cetyryl alcohol, you'd be looking at 6% cetyl alcohol and 4% stearic acid as a starting point to swap it out. If you try using just cetyl alcohol instead of cetyryl alcohol, the finished formulation will have less substance to it, sort of in the way that a liquid oil has less substance to it than a butter. If you try using just stearic acid to replace cetyryl alcohol, the end product will have a higher melting point and will be heavier and creamier. In an emulsion, you may also get a stronger soaping effect. Pseudo waxes, which are wax-like ingredients made from hydrogenated vegetable oils, can be a decent alternative for cetyryl alcohol. I find that they are a bit creamier, so you may need to tweak the formulation or perhaps blend them with a bit of cetyl alcohol to get the end consistency you are looking for. If your cetyryl alcohol blend is different than one called for in formulation, you can try augmenting its skin feel and performance by adding a little bit of independent cetyl alcohol or adding a little bit of stearic acid to see if you can approximate the performance of the cetyryl alcohol blend in the original formulation. And lastly, let's wrap up with five free formulations that you can make using cetyryl alcohol. Formulation number one is my passion fruit coconut solid conditioner bar. Between the VTMS 25 and the independent cetyryl alcohol, this bar contains quite a lot of cetyryl alcohol. It is a beautiful, long-lasting, solid hair conditioner that can be customized with different carrier oils and scents. If you haven't tried making a solid conditioner bar yet, I highly recommend it, and this is a great formulation to start with. Formulation number two is my Mango Rosehip Solid Facial Oil. Cetyryl alcohol transforms a blend of rosehip oil and mango butter into a solid, silky bar. It's a great packaging-free alternative to a liquid facial oil, but it doesn't have the weight that a wax-hardened bar would have. Have. Formulation number three is my Moisturizing Repair Lotion. Cetyryl alcohol is a key emollient in this formulation, as well as a thickener. This deeply moisturizing lotion was inspired by a La Roche-Posay formulation, and it includes a whopping 30% vegetable glycerin. I highly recommend trying it out. Formulation number four is my Watermelon Mint Whipped Sugar Scrub. The soft, fluffy richness of cetyryl alcohol is perfect for thickening this scrub. Not only does it stay nice 
nice and soft for months on end, but it rinses off the skin wonderfully, leaving it feeling soft and pampered. And formulation number five is my Rich Lavender Shower Cleansing Cream. This formulation is part shower gel, part lotion. Satyral alcohol boosts viscosity, adds some richness, and helps stabilize the surfactant challenged emulsion. If you've been looking for something creamy and bubbly, definitely give this formulation a go. If you would like to learn more about subtle alcohol, click here. And if you would like to learn more about stearic acid, click here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.